I'm Mike James and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use the calculator to smooth out a time series data using a three-point moving average. In this example the number of babies born in a country hospital between 2003 and 2012 are recorded in the table below. Now you can see that I've replaced 2003 by T is 1, 2004 by T is 2, up to 2012 by T is 10. This is pretty common practice because it makes it easier to enter the data into the calculator. I'm going to now go into lists and spreadsheets in, in the calculator where I've entered this data, the year 1 to 10, and the births are entered in column B. The first thing I'm going to do is to plot these points in a scatter plot. So I'm going to go into data and statistics view, hit tab, and we always make the time, the independent variable, along the x-axis when we're dealing with time series. So I'm going to choose year for the independent variable. And now I'm going to hit tab and choose births as the dependent variable along the y-axis. So there's our scatter plot. In time series, we usually join up the points using a straight line, and we can do this quite easily in the calculator by hitting menu, plot properties, connect data points number one. So there's a time series shown quite clearly. Now you can see there's quite a few fluctuations in the births over the years and quite a bit of variation, but you can probably also see the overall trend of the births tends to be downwards. Well, let's see if we can confirm this by working out what are called moving averages, which will give us a better idea as to the overall trend of the number of births over the years. So I'm going to hit Control, left arrow, go back to uh, Lists and Spreadsheet view, and I've got an extra column here called Moving Average. Now the moving average is simply the mean value. Now because we're going to do the uh, three-point moving average, it's going to be the mean value of these first three numbers, and we're going to record it in this cell here, which is the middle of these first three numbers. So we're going to add the 25 to the 17 to the 24 and divide by 3 and record the number here. That's the first moving average. We then repeat the procedure for the next three numbers, 17, 24 and 21, and record the moving average in this cell here. This is repeated all the way down through the births column. Now the best way to do this is to get the calculator to do it. So I'm going to click in this cell between the 25, 17 and 24, this middle cell, and I'm going to enter a formula. Now you should tell the calculator it's going to be a formula by clicking the equal sign, and I'm going to add these three numbers. But I don't actually put the uh, numbers in, I actually put the cell addresses in. They also need to be in brackets, so this 25 is in B1, has address B1, plus the 17 has address B2, plus the third number, 24, is in cell B3. And then I divide that by 3 and press Enter. So that's the mean. 22 is the mean of these three numbers. And you can see the formula down here at the bottom. It's important to put the brackets in because otherwise you will end up just dividing the last number by 3 and not getting the mean value. Now we could do the same in the next cell, but it's easier to copy this formula relatively, similar to what you would do in Excel. Now to do this in the calculator, you have to have to hit Menu, Data, and Fill. And you'll see that you'll get a dashed line around the, this particular cell. So I'm going to hit the down arrow key now, which will fill in the following cells underneath all the way down to the bottom. Well, I've gone too far so I need to just go up to here and click enter and there I have it all the moving averages have been entered. Now you can just check this if you click in this cell here 20.6667 and check the formula you can see it's the mean value of the number in cell B2 and B3 and B4. So it works quite well.
Now notice we have an empty cell at the top here and we also have an empty cell at the bottom. Now expect that with a three point moving average. If you were do it, doing a five point moving average you would have two empty cells top and bottom. The next step is to plot the moving averages against the years on the same grid. So I'm going to hit control again and right arrow and go back to my grid. So I'm going to tab round and you can see we have births, moving average and year. Now the problem is if I select the moving average now I can plot it but I've lost the original plot and I really want both plots on the same graph so I'm going to tab round again so that the Y value is chosen and try and, and go back to the original plot which is births and this time I'm going to hit menu plot properties and choose add Y variable now by doing this I can now add the moving average plot to the original plot and there it is so you can see that the moving average points have tended to flatten out the uh, variations that we had in the previous graph and also it's easier to see that the overall trend of the number of births is downwards from the moving average plot. Now if we need to make predictions or projections it's best to use the moving average plot rather than the original plot which is a bit erratic. So I'm going to hit tab again until I hit the y-axis and I'm just going to plot the moving averages and remove the original plot. So these are the moving average points. Now I'm going to try and find the equation of least squares of this set of points. So I'm going to hit menu, analyze, regression, show linear mx plus b. Now I get this error message. Why has this occurred? Well it tells me the dimensions are not matching and I haven't got the uh, line of best fit. So I'm going to go back, control left arrow to the lists and spreadsheets view. Now the reason I get that error message is because there is no number corresponding to the year one in this empty cell and it's the same at the end we have a number missing and it's telling me there's a mismatch. Now to get around this problem you might think well why not just put zero in here well that doesn't work because that will affect the calculations then of the least squares regression line. One other ploy is to remove the one by deleting it I'm going to try and remove this number one and I'm going to now go down to the other row where I had an empty cell and it was this one here because you can see the empty cell there and 10 doesn't correspond to any number so I'm going to delete that as well and now I'm going to try go back to the graph and try and create the least squares regression equation. So I'm going to hit the control button and right arrow. So let's try it this time. Hit menu, analyze, regression, show linear mx plus b. Yes the least squares regression line appears, that's the line of best fit for the moving average points. Now there's its equation so I'm now going to go back to the main page where I've copied this equation that's the least squares regression equation for the moving average points and I can use this equation now to make projections or predictions so suppose we wanted to predict or forecast the number of births in 2013 well we would take t is equal to 11 and we would replace x in this case by 11 and if you work this out it gives the number 14.4484 so approximately 14 births would be expected in the year 2013 and that's how you 
generate moving averages using the calculator.